So the second day after the first night where it gets power is it has to make sure that it has good communications with the Earth. We also can only talk to the Earth when we can see it from Mars. You can think about the sun rising and setting on Earth. Well, the Earth rises and sets on Mars, and we can only see and talk to the Earth when it's above the horizon. After that, the rover must then stand up, which means it has to get all of its wheels, which are bent down like this, plunged out in all directions, and it has six of them. And then it must get away from the lander, and then takes a few pictures to see where it is, and then finally, checking all of its systems to make sure it's okay, it has to say, all right, I'm ready to be on my own. My next thing I have to do is I have to cut all of my electrical connections to the lander. This is a big moment. This is a birth in truth, because from that moment on, the rover is completely on its own. If you look at this pocket sitting here, you'll notice that it looks suspiciously like a wheel. And you'll also notice if we grab a wheel, that the wheel will sit very nicely in it. And these are pockets that were deliberately put in because we had to accommodate this wheel sticking outside of this tetrahedron. And these very same pockets and pockets like it are things that we have to be able to drive over and not get caught in. Now these ramps, what they do for us is they give us three different ways we can get off of this lander. The reason that they're needed is because when we do land on airbags and in the uncertain terrain, we can end up at tilts so that the entire lander is tilted to the side. We can have it pitched up forward. We can have a combination thereof. So what these ramps are doing for us is they're giving us the capability to go off in different directions and handle terrain that we don't really know is going to be there until we get there. It might take as many as 10 days to get safely onto the surface. Or if we run into big problems, it could take as long as we need to. It's a process that we don't rush, and we do what's necessary when it's necessary, and we make no risks doing it. That whole process, which is an exciting week right after landing, is called impact to egress. First time it's ever been done, and based on my experience, it's the most complicated and fascinating engineering sequence ever done on a robotic mission.